good day. Today I would like to review the Just Flight Duchess 76, which is a twin engine TTL aircraft that is uh, traditionally used for uh, flight schools. So this model is highly developed, it's also very expensive at $45 for the prepared 3D and FSX version. So at $45 for a general aviation aircraft, I expect this to be one of the best. So I just want to show you uh, around what I think about it and if it's such a good investment. Now, uh, we can just discuss the features really quickly. Um, this panel switcher here, you can toggle the aircraft powered immediately for yourself. Uh, there's a checklist. And whenever it's not it's not the checklist is not linked to the item you have to set it you have to change the checklist color on your own so as you can see this none of these things really are true so it's just uh, uh, two-dimensional like that it's not dynamic it's not linked what's this like computer um, take off the check Okay, there's a flight computer also, so you can determine your fuel use, your fuel flow and stuff like that, true airspeed, good for planning your flight, so when you're in cruise mode you can determine how much uh, fuel you're going to be using and stuff like that, and you can also tow the aircraft. show you how the aircraft is towed. I think it's because I turned the aircraft around. Why it's reversed. Yeah, I did it previously, and that's why it's reversed. I don't know what I did. I think I turned the aircraft around, and so it would have. Uh, have changed the orientation as you notice this is, is not forward this is supposed to be forward but it's moving back yeah it's because I changed it around it's a little bit, it's a little bit clumsy but it's a, it's, it, serves, it serves its purpose all right so these tie downs are only available when the battery power is off and the engines are off and the parking brake is set so if I turn on the batteries you see there's a pilot now this aircraft is supposed to be produced with HD textures to produce the highest possible texture clarity so these are the best of what is available HD textures. I find that I've, I have seen better, but I don't want to doubt because it's. Um, I believe that it, the more important features of the aircraft is actually its functionality and its um, and the engine management features. But these are all acceptable. It's it's good enough for forty four dollars.
And these three doors can't be opened. Alright, so I don't want to leave the battery on because there's an important feature which is available. Let's go to the add-on menu. There's an add-on menu. And here are the other features which are available to the simmer. You can toggle a panel state which we have seen. Toggle fuel pump gyro sounds. They're now off back on. Now engine management is what I want to show you. Engine management holds the following features. Engine management gives you the realism of operating like a real airplane. So you you have the failures associated if you do not operate it correctly. Like this airplane is it has a carburetor. So you need to use the carb heat whenever your engine RPM, your manifold pressure reduces below a uh, normal range so that the, the carburetor icing does not occur. Right, so there's spark plug falling. Spark plug falling occurs when you have low RPM, paper lock, oil usage and engine failure caused by low oil quantity and battery usage. If we leave the battery on, it will uh, fail eventually. You can enable or disable these features by selecting engine management the options you can also select between the the GPS you get a nicely stocked GPS a GTN a GNS 6430 532 which comes stock or you could if you have flight ones GTN 650 or 750 you can have them installed you have to go to your start menu uh, just flight cockpit switcher to get the type of GPS that you want but one definitely came stuck with it it definitely comes with with a a, uh, a GPS Panel selector is is that feature there? Is this? This is the panel selector. menu uh, what is the refill menu um, see how I can toggle the type of GPS now it switches real time now this cockpit is fully functional. Look, even the circuit breakers work. That is exceptional. You can close the doors. You can open the window. We will 
to see if there's external sounds that come in through that window when uh, when the airplane is in flight. This temperature gauge is operational. This aircraft has a cabin heater, so you can, uh, if, when it gets cold, you can heat the aircraft, the cabin. There's your lights, electrical switches, alternator, battery, your magnetos, there's a fuel pump, landing gear lever, throttle quadrant. Here is your coal flaps, and on top of your coal flaps is your Carb heat, very important. If you don't use your carb heat, then you, then a uh, carburetor icing will occur. That will reduce your RPM and or stall your engine as a result of ingested clumps of ice. Here's your trim, and here's your fuel selectors. They have two positions. One for cross feed and two for on. Here your instruments. It has a very attractive look to it. Just like definitely does really really well when it comes to general aviation aircraft and I'm very impressed that they released a twin engine product. Let's go back into the cabin. High resolution texture cabin. This aircraft is a four seater and here's your baggage section. No lights seem to be operational. This here is the door. Four-seater aircraft. All right. Let's get into the checklist and start this aircraft. Okay, so pre pre flight, park brake set, avionics off. I'm gonna search here off. Extra idle cutoff. Magneto switches off. Battery switch on. Your gauges check quantity on left right. One ignites checked. Flaps check operation. Check operation left, right. Let's 
Okay, these are associated here with the um, with the pre pre flights. So I will just go to the next checklist before start. Brakes set and the lever down. Circuit breakers all in. Hard heat. Selectors, um, light switches, off, battery, alternator switches, off. Engine start, battery switch on, alternators on, mixtures, switch, propellers. To a quarter inch on auxiliary fuel pump on magnetos both. So, prime, there's the prime switches right here. You have to hold it, you have to press it. Three, one, then start. Start and confirm. I need to switch both. Control. 1200. 1000 to 1200 RPM. More pressure. Check. Engine number two. Start our warning lights. that many of these checkers never turn, never inform me to turn on the beacon light. And I don't see a beacon light here. See there's no beacon light. I thought beacon lights were important to inform ground personnel that this aircraft is being powered. as required in your instruments check Pause. system test okay Charlie, Foxtrot, Alpha, Alpha, Beach, Charlie, Charlie, Beach. 
very impressed with this song. Very, very realistic. I have to operate it carefully, otherwise, it will fail. It gives the normal issues of a, um, uh, a piston engine aircraft. It's small. I'm impressed by that. Oh, we have to talk to way up to runway. Seven. I like this here. We, do, we would do a run up, so I would like to do that run up and show you how the the the, uh, the RPM gauge, the the magnetos actually do respond to switching them off. Okay, so uh, let's go to the checklist, run up checklist, park and brake set, throttles twenty two hundred. Thank you. 
the 2200 RPM. Naturally, without any movement of the throttle. Good. Operator heat. Check. Should see some reduction. But not much. on runway 7 we'll be doing a left hand circuit there is an autopilot in this aircraft I'll show you how it works fuel selectors on auxiliary fuel pumps on engine checks Covering the heat of mixture rich propeller higher up here, and those switches both flaps 10 degrees set trims.
handling the characteristics. Very nice sound. It's a very nice aircraft. I like it. Look at this little sound. Very smooth lift up from the runway. I, I noticed that I had to pull the black the back the stick far back in order to get it to unstick off the ground at 71 knots. It was a little bit strange. At 71 knots I I applied back pressure but it, it did not unstick. I don't know if that is an, a realistic feature or not. Use the low resolution of my terrain textures. Um, my computer is not fully adapted to prepared Fusion 5. says to make sure that the flaps are down so I don't know um, what's the normal procedure for this airplane about the flaps when it's normal to just use 10 or if it's normal to use more
just still on the, the, the throttle. Don't hold the nose off, you're gonna see a strike. Here's the flaps. Check your uh, trim. Second height is normally about 900 feet, 900 feet above the, elev the uh, aerodrome or elevation. Aerodrome elevation of this airport is about uh, 20, 40 feet, so second height should be about 940 feet. Use the horizon to hold the altitude, not your instruments. The horizon gives you a better um, gauge so you can hold the altitude with it. Actual horizon levels. At the runway threshold, start. You see your speed, so we turn the cover a bit more. Now I'm landing 
checklist. Yeah. No. Lamps. No. Brakes tested. power to adjust your altitude. Don't use your pitch to find altitude, otherwise your speed will increase. You have to trip to get your speed 80 knots. When 80 knots is achieved, then you apply power to maintain your altitude. Elevator co control inputs are needed. The major thing that you're using is the power. See, I'm, I'm descending as I like, but my speed is not increasing as usual. Over the threshold, and you just bring the power back a little bit. Cut. Don't hold the nose off. Never hold the nose off. Never do that. Three seconds is all you get. Well, the aircraft is fabulous. I like it very, very much. Very much. The sound is excellent. The model is excellent. The, the dynamic engine issues are present. Um, and the engine management feature brings it to life. It's a real aircraft you're actually using. That's uh, not something from uh, FS 2004. We are mature simmers now, you know, so we need uh, that realism, reflection of what it is actually like to operate a real aircraft. Um, the external model is, is excellent, but let me talk about the issues, right? There isn't any fuel in payload manager. You have to open the FS, the prepared default payload manager. There's no dynamic, uh, you can't add any nice passengers to your cabin. That's the biggest issue for me. No payload manager and I've had, I've had uh, add-ons before, like the Brassard. Um, by I can't remember, I think it's AS simulations, the, the, the brassard here. Yeah. You can add um, you can add people to the cabin and uh, you know it's a big issue for me when when developers don't learn from each other. Right, so that's that's my biggest issue. The fuel and payload manager and no um, add-on passengers in the back that are nicely animated and their heads move and stuff like that. Uh, I'll show you this checklist, interactive checklist. Um, but yeah, this checklist also includes um, emergency procedures, and this is excellent. Let me show you it failures. Right, emergency checklist. You have normal procedures and failure procedures. That is, that is excellent. Um, I want to show you the, the interactive checklist. Where is it? Here it is. 
is. I've never figured out how to use it. I don't know how to use it. But you know, you can learn. I, I, I didn't really see much instructions on how to use that interactive checklist. I searched the manual and, and there's not much instruction. Right? So I, I read this aircraft very highly. It's going to remain with me. I'm going to fly this aircraft. It's excellent, it's excellent, excellent. Just give me my fuel and payload manager and my passengers in the back and I'm good. Alright, so I hope that I know that you will like it. It's excellent. Thanks for watching my review and consider sticking around, subscribing. Thank you.